All right, so I wanna put something out there because I genuinely want to know. What was your first Strat and do you still have it? You see, I've been rocking with this bad boy for about five or six months and it's become a pretty big workhorse for me. I've been able to use it in live show settings. I've been able to use it here to record videos and I've been able to use it to just jam with friends. And I found that the tones are really quite amazing, so much so that it's basically become the main guitar that I use. But if you would have told me five or six years ago that my main guitar would be Mexican Strat, I would have slapped the slash out of you. Like, I literally wouldn't have believed it. And why is that? Like, why did I have this kind of disdain for Mexican Strats? And for that, we have to take it all the way back. You see, when I was first playing guitar, my first electric guitar after learning some of those acoustic riffs was an Epiphone Dot. And it was a great guitar. It would have sounded amazing if I would have actually learned how to use it. But I didn't because I was very inexperienced. And I really wanted to mimic the tones of the guys I was listening to to the Eric Clapton's and the Jimi Hendrix's of the world. So I needed that single coil tone. So what I did, I did as a lot of kids do, I scoured the internet. So I asked my parents, I begged them, and they came through after I had given them the link. They bought me a Fender Stratocaster with a maple neck. It was sunburst, it was un believable. I mean, opening that was like, wow, I am the John Mayer now. I mean, I play this thing like every single day. I practice and I had so many great memories, so many important memories of my guitar career learning on that strat. I mean, from learning my first iterations of the pentatonic, learning my first few solos. And although it didn't necessarily sound that good. <laughs> I feel like I did a very brave thing by showing you that recording. Please make sure to subscribe, please. If you subscribe, I will make sure to show you even more embarrassing footage from the beginning. I think, like I said, I had all these sentimental moments of really learning on that guitar. But one day when I was just messing around, I had overheard some people talk about this American Strat. And I was like, wait, what is that? American Strat, I thought I had the best one. And something clicked in my brain that day. You see, because I didn't know a lot about gear, I was kind of privy to whatever I had heard most recently. And even though they hadn't necessarily said that Mexican guitars suck, I thought the reason for my bad tone problems and the reason why I wasn't sounding like the Eric Clapton of the world or like the heroes that I had talked about before was because I didn't have the best gear, because I didn't have whatever Fender custom shop they were playing. And at this point, I thought it was the American Strat. So only not nine months, literally within nine months of getting that first guitar, I sold it so that I could get a brand new Highway 1 Strat. It was a USA model. And that guitar sounded great. It did a lot for me throughout the years. I was so convinced not only that American Strats were good, but that Mexican Strats must sound like trash. They must be awful because that's the reason for my bad tones. How little did I know? I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's literally what I thought. And I think that a lot of younger players might have similar opinions. So I wanted to ask the question, why do we get this reputation, especially like I said, for younger players? And like I said, I'm not arguing that Mexican strats and American strats are the same, but I wanted to put my 19 year old self to the test. Like, was he right? Do these Mexican strats actually sound bad? Or is there a reason why I've been using this thing so much? I think the first answer to that is reputation. Different guitars have different reputations, just like different players do. And because we just live in a world of comparison, you want to compare something to the next thing over and the next thing up. You start to wonder why why different guitars cost different prices and you start to associate that with the actual playing quality of the guitar. So let's see, does this thing actually sound good? So I mic'd it up, let's see what happens. <laughs> Thank you. 
second reason why some people might have different misconceptions about different pieces of gear is because of influences. You see, as especially as a young guitar player, you see your guy, you see the guy who you want to play like, and you see him playing this guitar and you see that it costs thousands of dollars. And you see, you see John Fujanti playing his 62 custom shop sunburst strat. And you're like, dang, to sound like him, I need to have that strat. And in a way, I'm not saying gear is useless. I mean, to effectively tone match, to get the perfect result, you would have to be that player to be playing through their exact rig. But you can get way closer than you might think with your gear that you're playing now. For example, if I tried to copy John Mayer's belief tone, even though I'm not playing through his specific two rock and have his specific touch, and yes, that amp is incredible, I could still probably get closer than you would think with my Mexican Strat right here. Here's what that might sound like. Mm -hmm. And that's just knowing a little bit about amp settings and really knowing your guitar and really knowing the way you can adjust those to make it sound more like your heroes. There might be this misconception to think that I'm waging war on American strats. Like I'm saying like, oh my gosh, you just need to throw out your American strat and buy this Mexican. No, like I was saying before, there is a difference. And Fender, if you ever want to send me your new American vintage too, that would be much appreciated. I would love that. I wouldn't quite say no to that. But going back to the influences, I wish I had known that there was a reason why your favorite guitar players choose the guitars that they do. It's not just a matter of what's the highest guitar that I can afford. It's also a matter of feel and what's available and knowing how to use what's available in a way that's gonna make the guitar sound amazing. And I think, especially with these, there's a way to make them sound really good, even professional. And I think I've just noticed that over and over again. This is not a sponsored video. I've actually had like a number of guitar players either come over to jam or during live sessions who have picked up this guitar who have been like, hey, Mike, let me play that real quick. Let me see what you got. And they've actually said this is the best Mexican strat they've ever played this player series. And I've been like, yeah, it's a workhorse, my man. What is the point of all this? I think the point of all this is to say that the gear threshold is kind of changing. I think I've seen it with virtual amps like I've talked about before, where a lot of virtual amps are becoming way more on par with real amps than we would have ever thought. And I think the same thing is happening even with these, where some guitars where I might formally consider them entry level are able to get really professional tones as long as you know how to use them and you know about the amp you're using and you know how to properly use those settings. And I can't wait to see how those thresholds change even in the future. But also let me know, what's your sleeper guitar? What is the guitar that right now is your workhorse that if I would have told you a couple years ago, that's your go-to, you wouldn't have believed it. But anyway, thank you for watching. Watching. Again, I've had so much fun with these long videos. This is the first kind of geary video essay that I'm doing. So if you have a piece of gear that you want me to talk about, let me know. Again, make sure to subscribe if you had a good time, like this video, and most important of all, have a fantastic day.